Hey, what's going on guys? Kurosama here. So today we're taking a look at something different that is not Plamo. Instead, we're gonna take a look at the new kind of Fitbit virtual pet, the Vital Bracelet. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. So what is it? Well, it's kind of like a virtual pet that you wear like a watch. The only kind of functionality it has as like a Fitbit or a watch is that it tells time and you can see the amount of steps that you've taken that day. But honestly, the steps are pretty inaccurate since I'm probably just moving my hands around like this and just accumulating a bunch of steps. Now coming in at 6,300 yen, it is a hefty price tag for a virtual pet. But Honestly, I've been out of the virtual pet kind of fandom for a long, long time, so I'm not familiar with what a appropriate price tag would be for the virtual pets. This, however, it does have a lot of good functionality, so let's see if the price tag is actually warranted. Now, where can you get this? You can try Amazon.jp. Uh, previously, that's where I got mine uh, on a pre-order. I also had the version special from the Premium Bandai shop in Japan. Now, the Premium Bandai shop in America was selling the regular one, the white or the black. However, they sold out almost immediately. So, currently, you're gonna have to just either get it at a store within Japan, which is extremely difficult because I have not found any outside of the one I found on day one but you can always try amazon.jp or some third party sellers or obviously eBay. Now, how do you use this thing? Well, like I mentioned, it's essentially a watch. It also has steps in it. You have a virtual pet in that watch. You need to take care of your virtual pet and how you do that is by feeding it energy and energy is created from you by walking, moving, increasing your vitals, battling, a lot of other things to just ensure that its longevity is extended. Uh, in normal V-Pets, I know that you have to feed them, you have to clean up poop and all that. It's, it's not here, it's not present. You don't have to traditionally feed them with food, nor do you clean up any poo. You just essentially stay active. You have to maintain a very active lifestyle, keep it on your wrist, and just make sure you don't do too many uh, losing in, in a battle because obviously losing in a battle is going to be doing a lot of damage to the health of your Digimon. Well, how do you get the Digimon onto the VB? Well, essentially you use these things called DIM cards, which is Digimon Identified Memory. And it's just one Digimon on that one card and can only be used on one VB. You cannot change it up with different you know, watches. It's essentially gonna be the one that you own. Even if you own multiple, you can only have one with that one DM. And you basically plug it in and download that Digimon onto the VB. And from there, you're taking care of it. Now let's shift our focus over to the Vital Bracelet. Honestly, the looks of it, I like it. The band itself is going to be like this, you know, soft rubber. Um, I have no issues with it, but for people who have uh, maybe thicker wrists, you're gonna have some issues actually getting this on. So I do recommend getting like a, you know, a rubber band or something up until the new extension uh, band comes out, which should be coming out around July on the premium Bandai site in Japan. So. That might get to the American market, but for right now, I know it's gonna be sold in Japan. It's gonna have three extra notches uh, just for those guys and gals who have uh, thicker wrists. Now, the actual face of it looks good. I do like the looks, but it is going to be a thick boy. This is just protruding very far away from my wrist, unlike my other watches, my smart watches, or my other Fitbit. This is just really, really thick, and it's, Kind of, I don't know, it, it's a little bit uh, eccentric, I would say, but most people don't really have a problem with it at my work because I'm a working person and with work comes a lot of regulations when it comes to watches. So the black is pretty much what I need to stick with. The white, eh, you can work with it, but I do like the black. Then of course you're gonna have the green, which is extremely eccentric. I just, oh my God, that is very bright and I don't really think it's that great of a, of a color, but I will probably wear it on the weekends uh, when I get a chance. Now on the left side of it is actually going to be this little card that you take out and this is just like a little placeholder so that way you can plug in the dim cards into that slot. But instead of having that opening, they give you just a little piece and you just slot it right in. The top button on the right hand side is going to be your options button. In the middle is going to be a slot for the micro SD and you just basically plug this little plastic piece right over it. And then below that is going to be your select button. 
Now the screen itself looks fine. You're gonna have a bright, you know, colorful little screen. I actually have no issues with the interface inside. I think it looks great. I love the backgrounds. And to be honest, it's actually really fun to play with. But I will say the durability on the screen is horrible. Um, I've had this for about a week now and there's tons of scratches. I'm generally a really careful person, but I do understand that for people like me that are always working out, you're running, you're working, and you have this on about like, you know, 12 to 16 hours a day, you know, obviously you're more prone to, you know, scratches or something like that. So definitely get some kind of protector over that screen. Now for the battery itself, it is an 18 hour battery as they stated, and it's really hard to determine how long it's actually going to last. Uh, so far, my personal experience over a week, I've been able to use it 12 hours consistently, and that's from like, you know, battling with it, using the NFC, uh, doing a lot of different uh, navigation between it and the app. Uh, also just, you know, kind of like doing the uh, trophies and doing other like things or just checking my time. For 12 straight hours, I've had no issue and it's always been like the 50% battery. Uh, but it's like three stages, you got 100%, 50%, and then like red. Uh, that doesn't have a percentage on the phone or on the watch itself. So it's unfortunate, you gotta, you gotta gauge where the battery is. But I do recommend if you are gonna charge it, just charge it for the necessary amount and that's going to be about four hours. You don't really wanna overcharge it because you could damage the battery itself, but um, so far I've probably charged it for about five hours every night and I've had no issues you know, for just at least this one week. Now there is a switch underneath the watch that it basically turns it completely off or completely on. If you turn it completely off, it resets everything. When you turn it back on, you're gonna have to do the time and the date, but your Digimon and it's like vitals and everything is gonna be untouched. So you don't really have to worry about that part, but you are gonna have to worry about the trophies. The timer for the trophies will reset, so you're gonna have to wait another 24 hours in order to get those trophies back. Uh, but what you can do is, and I'll talk about this a little bit later in the trophy section, you can manipulate the time so that way you can get your trophies if you do happen to turn the watch hard off. Now the Digimon, let's finally talk about them. On the main menu screen, you're gonna have your Digimon right there. And looks really cool, love the animations. I think the, the sprites look fantastic to be honest. Uh, and right at the top, you're gonna have your battery gauge and from below that, you're going to have the time. Uh, obviously time is gonna be a big issue because when we get further into this uh, video, time does play a part with the Digimon and its functionality. And below that, that little human shaped character is going to be the Vitals. So Vitals plays a big part in the battle system and just overall like health of the Digimon. And finally below that is going to be the step counter. So if you wanna know exactly how many steps you've taken, you can see it right there on the home screen. Now let's shift focus to the next option, which is going to be kind of like uh, stats. Uh, this is the you know, internal stats for the Digimon and just what you've already seen on the menu. Uh, but if you click on it, you do see the vitals. And let's talk about vitals. It is a necessity to have high vitals if your Digimon is going to be performing in battles because your Digimon has stats. And if you want your Digimon to perform the best that it can, the vitals need to be just skyrocketed. So that way it can do like it's attacked better, it can actually hit consistently instead of just being the one that has low health and always getting beat up. Increasing your vitals means increasing your heartbeat. So by running or consistently walking, you can increase your vitals that way. Another way to get your vitals increased is going to be through battles. Uh, there's different like levels of uh, increments that you can get. So if you're doing like the versus dim or if you're doing NFC battles, uh, if you battle like a rookie at rookie stage, you get 100 uh, vitals. If you battle a rookie, I think at champion level, you're gonna get like 80 vitals. And if you do it at an ultimate level, you get like 50 vitals. And then mega, I think is still 50. But if you are a rookie and then you battle a champion, you will get about like 200 vitals back. So the higher level of Digimon that you defeat at a lower stage, you will receive more vitals than if you did it at a uh, like a same level or if you did it at lower. But generally, you're going to want to increase your vitals before you even jump into a battle because if you just start jumping into battles, eh, then you're gonna start getting your ass handed to you and you don't want that to happen because you want a high win ratio, especially if the Digimon you're aiming for requires a high win ratio. 
Now vitals do decrease if it has no reading on a heartbeat. So if you take your watch off, even for like 30 minutes, I think you can lose like 50 vitals. Uh, but if you have your watch completely off for 24 hours, your Digimon will actually die. So ensure that you have your watch on as long as your Digimon is active. If your Digimon is active and you're just not able to have your watch on, just turn the device off and you should be fine. Losing battles will also lose vitals, and that just depends on the Digimon that you fight and what stage you are at. Now, what does not change your vitals is hibernation. So if you put it in like the app and you put it in the hibernation section, or if it's, if it's in the app by itself, uh, it's actually not going to change the vitals. If you put the Digimon in backup, the vitals will not change, or if you turn it off, it's not going to change, or if the Digimon is sleeping. So any of those uh, situations will not change the vital status. Now on the home screen, the Digimon will have different animations for whatever activity you're doing. If you're actively walking, and I guess somehow the VB actually kind of reads that, maybe through the elevation of the heartbeat and the steps, uh, the Digimon itself will walk, or it will exercise like lift weights. So there are some different animations, and each Digimon is very different with their animations. And Digimon will sleep. It really is, uh, I think, random for the individual Digimon. So unlike attributes that is kind of set for that Digimon, I think the activity level of a Digimon is uh, random. So uh, for my Agumon, it, it was uh, 0, 08 to 2000. It's active, and that is basically an active Digimon. From 09 to 2100, that is a normal Digimon. And then from 10 to 2200, it is actually going to be a lazy Digimon. Now your Digimon will have good mental statuses. One will be good and it's reflected by a sun that's kind of like hovering above it. It just means that it's going to be performing even better in battle. If it's a normal status, there won't be anything around it. So it's just kind of a, you know, a even flow of a uh, proficiency. But if it has a bad mental status, uh, it is going to be half as effective in battle. Now for max vitals, each Digimon is going to have different sets. For Rookie, it's going to be 2,500. For Champion, it's going to be 5,000. And then for Ultimate, it is going to be 7,500. And lastly, for Mega, it is going to be 9,999 max value. The next one is going to be Heartbeat. The Heartbeat is going to be on the top part, and then on the bottom is going to be your highest Heartbeat for that day. And lastly, there's going to be steps. So it just shows the amount of steps that you have for that day. Now the next option is going to be stats for your Digimon. And here you can actually see your active Digimon. You can see the days that you've had with it. Uh, that's actively because once it dies, those days actually reset. Uh, you do see the name display at the top. You're gonna see the, the attribute. So whether it's a virus type or not. And you just see the stage whenever you click on select once again. Now if you press options, you can scroll over and you see the DP, the HP, and the AP. Now how I mentioned, the DP is going to be the Digimon power. That's the effectiveness or the accuracy of each move. And then HP is the overall vitals for that Digimon, uh, how many you know attacks that you can take. And then the AP is going to be the attack power, so the damage output from that Digimon. And all these are going to be increased or decreased by whatever vitals you're currently at. Next is gonna be your percentage of battles won. So you have the percentage on the top, and then at the bottom, it'll be on the left-hand side, the amount of battles you won, and on the right-hand side, it'll be the total battles that you've actually conducted. Next is gonna be trophies, and you accumulate these by doing missions, whether they're normal, hard, or special. Now for the punching bag, that is going to be training, and training is going to be a daily thing. So uh, for normal, which is going to be the first training option, you have uh, essentially a set training. It's, it's normal because it's pretty easy. It's usually like win one battle or get X amount of uh, vital points or get X amount of steps, like 400 steps, and that's it. You'll get one trophy from the normal. Now for hard mode, you can get one to two trophies for each individual one. And once again, you can only do these once a day. Now, if you get a good, you'll get one trophy. If you get a great from doing the actual mission, then you get two trophies. The list of things that you could do is going to be crunches, punching, squats, or dashing. Now for special missions, you're gonna have to take the Digimon from the VB and you're gonna attach it to the app. Now when you transfer it, you take the special mission, attach it to the Digimon, and then transfer it back to the VB. And from there, it activates immediately. It doesn't, it doesn't take a delay, there's no like selection. Once the Digimon is back to the VB, then it's going to activate immediately. 
for the special missions, they are a little bit challenging. Uh, might be like win 10 battle or win six battles, do 10 battles. Uh, might be like walk or, um, you know, accumulate 6,000 steps within 60 minutes. Uh, and pretty much all of them are like a 60 minute timer. Uh, so once it gets onto the watch, you immediately have to do all these and it's going to be in sequence. So if you have four different special, um, you know, missions on there, you can do one and then you immediately go to the second, immediately go to the third, immediately go to the fourth. So there's no like I do the first one, I wait like two hours, then I do the second one. It's all going to be like pretty much consistent. Upon winning a special mission, you will be granted three trophies, and when you bring your Digimon back to the app, then you gain experience for your Tamer level, which we'll cover a little bit later. And lastly within this is going to be Adventure Mode. Adventure Mode is essentially a way to unlock the secret dig Digivolution within that dim. So some dims, not the trials, but like basically the normal versions of the dims have a secret evolution that in order to get to that evolution, you need to unlock it through the Adventure Mode. Um, I'm, as of right now, I'm not entirely sure if the Adventure Mode has to be done before you even get to that evolution. So if you are at the ultimate stage and the secret one is Omega, if you have to do it all uh, as a ultimate, I'm not sure. I, I think maybe you could do it all the way to a different Mega, complete it as a different Mega, and then your Digimon dies, and then you can go to that actual new uh, evolution. I think that's how it goes, but I'm not enti entirely sure, so maybe information is a little bit different. But whenever you get into this mode, your Digimon is in adventure mode now. It's not, it's not, you can't go into the other menus or anything. You're in adventure mode until you cancel out of it. Now there's going to be 15 different stages and they essentially take different steps uh, to get to those required stages. Once you actually make the X amount of steps, which is like 500 or 1,000, uh, once you get to those amount of steps, you have to fight that stage boss. And it's gonna start basically from easy all the way to hard. So you don't you don't wanna do this as a rookie. Do this as like an ultimate, like a very high uh, vital um, ultimate or a high vital mega. That's how you are basically gonna be able to complete this. But as a champion or as a rookie, I don't foresee you being able to complete adventure mode. Now let's say you get to stage four and you're done. You, you finish stage four, you're on to stage five. Well, you long press the select button, the bottom button, and you can exit out of it and it's going to maintain your placement. So you don't have to worry about it if you just wanna take your Digimon and just like kind of do other things. But once you transfer your Digimon to the app or turn the VB off, it's going to reset your adventure mode progress. So, but if you just leave that Digimon in the active slot, you'll be fine. Now, I do want to mention that Adventure Mode is tethered to that Dim card, so you can't be an Agumon and do the Garurumon's, um, you know, Dim Adventure Mode. You're basically stuck at Agumon's fighting all of his evolution trees in the Adventure Mode, and then Garurumon's fighting all his within his Dim card's evolution tree. Next is going to be the light bulb, which is backup. So you can have two Digimon on one VB. And if you just don't really want to actively be using this whatever active Digimon you have, you put that into the backup and you can take the other Digimon and put it into the active slot. Or you can take the Digimon that's active, put it away, and then uh, you know load in a different DIM card. Um, but uh, the app is going to allow you to have more usage out of the VB with different DIM cards because if you have two and you have a third DIM card, you're going to have to delete one of the Digimon uh, in order to upload that new DIM card. Now, backing a Digimon is what is necessary for Jogress. So if you want to, I'm just going to call it DNA Digivolve, but in order to DNA Digivolve, you are going to have to have one Digimon in the active slot and then one in the back that are compatible. They have to be two different attributes except for the trial ones because both of those are viruses, the Black War Greymon and the Black Metal Garumon. Both of them are viruses, so I guess it doesn't apply to them. But for everything else, they need to be the opposite attribute. So one can be a virus, one can be a free, or one could be a vaccine, one could be a data, and then they can jog rest uh, as long as they're compatible, one in the back, one in the active. It is also gonna take one hour to do it once all the pieces are set. Next is gonna be the app tab. So you basically select this if you wanna do any kind of communications with the app. So if you wanna transfer a Digimon or something of the nature, you, you know, basically select that and you can actually have communications with the app. So next we have is going to be settings. The first thing you're gonna see is going to be your time. So you can change the date or the time. And there's a little bit of tips and tricks that you can do with this. So like I mentioned with the trophies, you can only do one per day, but it resets at 23.59. So you can set your, your timer to 23.59 and let 
it roll over that one minute, then your trophies will reset. So you can do that little trick, or you can change the times, like if your Digimon's sleeping and you're active, hey, just change your Digimon's uh, time and, you know, from 10, 100 to whatever, you can just set it at 10, 100, and then keep on playing with your Digimon, so that way you can keep the, di the Digivolution timer running, because while it sleeps, the Digivolution timer actually stops. So if I'm still awake right now, which is technically 9.46 p.m., um, I, my Digimon's still awake because I do want it to Digivolve. But keep in mind that whenever you start resetting the times, it's going to reset your steps. And if you take a Digimon and you put it into the app early that day, you you know, you know log in like 6,000 steps. But then you take it out, put it back, and then you change the date, you put it back. Whatever that new step counter is, is going to overwrite that date's step counter. This is going to have your background. So you have four different options. You're going to have three is going to be consistent throughout all the dims. But the last one is going to be a dim specific uh, background. So if you have like Agumon, Garurumon, those two are going to be the same. The two trials are going to be the same. And pretty much like those in those like, volumes, uh, those are all going to be consistent. Now the background will change every time you just you know put it into the uh, the the backup or if you put it into the app. So if you're no if you know you're gonna put it into the app like relatively soon, I wouldn't bother with changing the uh, background. But if you know you're gonna have the watch on, you're not gonna have any kind of interactions or anything. Hey, go ahead and change it. Uh, you know the background, you won't have any issues. Next is brightness, so you can adjust the brightness on the actual screen. Then you have sound. You can either choose on or off. I do wish that you could have set like maybe uh, the loudness of it. But, you know, I, I just turn mine off during working hours, and then when I'm off work, I turn the sound back on. Next you're going to have is the reset button. So it basically resets the vital bracelet. I'm pretty sure it deletes all the Digimon, but it does not delete the connectivity to the DIMMs. So if you have a DIMM that you used on the VB, it is still going to be only usable on that VB. So you can just basically, you know, put it back in, get your Digimon. Uh, but if you want to reset, like, everything that you've done on the VB, you basically just do a factory factory reset. Now, if you're on the home menu, you can press the select button and you can see the player emblem and you can see the player level. Okay, let's talk about the dim cards real quick. So you are gonna have uh, six different dim cards as of right now. There are some that are slated for the future releases, uh, but we do have two that are going to be your trial versions, which is going to be the black metal gray mon, or I guess it's just called the metal gray mon, and then the other one's uh, black gauru mon. The Metal Greymon one, this is actually a pre-release kind of like prize. So it is a one, basically like a one line evolution. You basically go from Black Agumon all the way to Black War Greymon. But this was given out to all the pre-orders. Uh, if you got it like the, the day of at the stores or if you pre-order online, you can basically gra you know, grab this one. For Black Wear Garurumon, this was a like Twitter prize, so uh, I guess like certain people were able to win this, and from what I've read, there's only like 5,100 of them in existence. So these are pretty expensive because just obviously they're scarce, uh, but if you don't have either of these two, don't worry because they are releasing the future ones sometime in the, in, you know, in the distant future. Uh, we don't really know when, but they're going to have like a full actual tree of evolution, my speculation, though, is that they're probably going to come out either very late this year uh, after the Volume 3 that comes out, or it's going to be early next year. So don't think they're coming out tomorrow. Uh, the like new versions of these will probably be much later this year. And then, of course, if you have these two, you can basically get the Megas for each and then Jagras into Omnimon Zwart. And that's going to be a vaccine combination Mega, and I cannot wait because that's what I'm working on right now. Next, the one that actually comes with every single Vital Bracelet is going to be Pulse City. So this one is going to have your Pulse Mon, and it's, it has a pretty decent evolution line. I'm not really too fond of every single one, but I do love Bulk Mon, which is the Pitcher Digimon. Uh, but this is going to be the default one that comes with every single Vital Bracelet. This is going to be the Ancient Warriors. This one has the XV Mon pictured on it, and this is going to have the V Mon uh, Digivolution line. So this is only for the special edition, the green bracelet. And if you did not get that one, then good luck trying to get this, at least for a reasonable price, because uh, I know they're going for quite a bit of money online. Then for the volume one, you're going to have the Digi cards for Agumon as well as Garurumon. And obviously they're going to have their Digivolution lines and you can get Omnimon within these by jogressing. Uh, but yeah, it's I like these two. They're pretty good. They're kind of 
a little bit hard to get right now. I am having trouble just to find them out here in Japan. But if you can go online, you're probably going to find them from between like 1,700 yen, which is what they cost, to about like 4,000 yen, which is kind of like the scalper's price. But we'll talk more about each individual dim and what Digimon come in them in later videos. Now the last thing I'm going to talk about is going to be NFC battles. Like I mentioned before, battles are going to be random and you use these NFC or IC points to conduct these battles. You essentially scan your vital bracelet over the point and then anything within that evolution tree, so for the most part I have like a you know, Black War Greymon, I can get Black Agumon, Black Greymon, or get Metal Greymon or even Black War Greymon within my battle encounters. You can use a phone in order to basically initiate these, and that's what I do for the most part. If I really need to do battles, I'll take my phone and I'll scan the NFC right on it, so that way I can initiate battles and you know accumulate vital points or get anything I really need. Now, each Digimon will take five moves, and at the end of five moves or until the Digimon runs out of HP, will determine the winner. So if each Digimon uses all five of their moves, at the end of that, it will determine like, hey, whoever has the most HP will win the battle. Now, although dodging, I think, is pretty much random, the uh, the ability to do your special attack, because you have your normal attack, and you're going to have, like, a critical attack, in order to do that critical attack, I think is really dependent on the Digimon itself. Some Digimon are a little more active and proactive into doing their critical attacks than others. So, like, Bulkmon, he does his critical attack first, and, you know, as soon as you start the match. But for a lot of my other Digimon, they do their critical attacks second. Now let's say you run into a Digimon that's a little bit too powerful. You can hold the select button down right when it gets to the picture of the enemy and you can run away from that Digimon, scan again. There's no repercussions to it, so if you really feel like you're probably not gonna win that battle, feel free to run. But honestly guys, that's it for me. I've given you a lot of tips and tricks within this entire guide. I've expressed a lot of different things. I went over every single thing about the uh, vital bracelet. I will be making new videos when it comes to the dim cars, and I, I do hope you enjoy uh, this video, so that way it gives me a little more motivation to make those future videos, and maybe even some vlog type videos, like me going around, doing some battles, and just looking at the natural progression of my Digimon. But overall, I did enjoy making this video. It's a very long video. I took a lot of notes down just to make sure I give all you guys and girls uh, pretty accurate information. So let this be your ultimate guide to the virtual bracelet. But that's it for me, guys. So thank you all for watching, and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Bye bye.